Well, here's the PDI yard, and there it is. We'll get a little walk around. This one here is already got a battery in it. Uh, I'll check my lug nuts and put my signs on and all that stuff, and we should be ready to go shortly. I'm just kind of checking for damages right now, even though it's at the PDI yard. He moved it around here with a little bitty machine, and he was manhandling the heck out of it, so. And I've pulled these four, they ain't no big deal. I believe this is actually one of the better riding ones I pulled. But it does got a generator right up front, so it's going to be heavy in the nose. So we'll get her hooked up and get on our way. Still loving my mirror. But we're not backing up to hook up. It would appear that the battery is dead. I'm going to back up far enough to plug into it. I'm way off center, too. Close I can without hitting my toolbox. That's good. So they were going to get me a tech to come out here. What I was doing is I was going to this top stud right here. And apparently you can't do that. You need to go on the battery, the actual battery part of it. Because when I did that, I seen all the power light stuff start lighting up. So anyway, we got power to it now. Looking right here, we're pretty well lined up with her now. Bags up. I should have had it right there. Now, yep, I got it. Bring that on around, lock it in. Guys, if you can hear my compressor run in the background, I never think I can miss something so bad. I'm so happy to have that thing back working. I did a video on rebuilding it the other day. It's got that. The lights plugged in. Emergency brake wagons hooked up. Light cords hooked up. Okay, it's closed. I set this song on down. I had let this on too long and it stopped on me. So, power, retract, front. Nah, it's not too bad. It's still standing up like a man, boat up like a mad cat. Waiting on that other leg to start coming up over here. There it goes. And I have abused the car out of this auto gen jump box. Oh, I got two bars on it. And it is just getting to where it ain't as strong as it used to be. But like I said, the night I come over shuttling trailers, I had to hook every single trailer up to this thing the battery did and uh, every single trailer five trailers and it was eight degrees outside and it worked the crap out of it and to be honest with you it ain't been right since but it still works it still works good it still jump off anything I hook it to it just kicks overload on pretty regularly so that door is open when I tried to close it just a second ago it went up and it hit my bumper and at first thought I'm like oh man I'm gonna have to do something about that but I used forward just a hair turning my wheels to the right and that swung the truck around where you close the doors after going through and double and trip, triple checking stuff get my mirrors pulled out my plates on my placards on and just walk around a couple more times just to make sure we're ready to go
I like that. I can keep an eye on stuff, make sure there ain't nothing blowing around the bed of my truck and all kind of stuff. Well, I'm not going to say that didn't have me a little bit nervous because the last three times that I went in there, the first two times I had issues, either my trailer was gone, missing, someone had already picked it up, something. And then uh, the last time that I went, the gentleman I was with, his trailer had issues. And uh, it wasn't ready yet. They said he had to come back uh, later on to get it. And um, I'm really happy with the way that this clicked off, even though I had a little bit of issues. It, it's still better than what it could have been. If I'd have got there and the trailer would have already been gone, or if it wouldn't have been ready, or if it would have been major problems where I couldn't have even got it. So I'm good with that. And I am planning to get to. My next stop is Glendale, Kentucky, and then we'll see after that. I would love to make it to Jackson, Georgia. I really don't think there'll be time for all that, but we'll see. Made it down 31, and I was kind of at a toss-up. I didn't know if I wanted to go 74 to 275 to 75 and go straight shot all the way down on I-75, or if I wanted to come on down 65 and do... Um, 65 24 to 75 and i'm a little more used to coming this way so i decided to go ahead and do this and i tell you on the valor now i pulled some different ones that i don't even remember what that one was i pulled out to santee california but that thing was it was horrible but this one here and this is one of the best riding trailers i've pulled in a long time i mean don't get me wrong it is heavy and you feel it in the hills a little bit. And if you hit hard bumps, you feel it, but the airbags are cushioning it out pretty good and it's just floating right on down the road. Uh, I ain't pulled one of these in a long time and I forgot how good these actually ride. But uh, there is the door that covers the control panel to let the landing gear up and down. I cannot get it to stay closed because at General RV they lock the keys in the trailer and they unlock it when we get down here. They just leave us a way to, to unhook in the event something bad were to happen. So that uh, yeah, that's kind of aggravating because that little door is over there flopping in the wind. I taped it shut once with electrical tape and it came back open. I'll probably try it again next time I stop but at this rate, I'm just kind of not worried about it. I hate for it to be sitting out there flopping in the wind, but it is what it is. Anyway, I just figured I'd touch base, give you guys an update. And I've Googled the weight of this thing. I'll try to put a picture up right here. And I believe, if I remember, I'm going to try to put a picture up, but I'm also trying to go off memory. I think the dry weight on this trailer is 13,999 pounds or something like that right at 14 so I know my truck weighs less than 14 or less than 10 so 10 and 14 is 24,000 pounds so I actually had a little bit of extra room left over to play with so that's a good deal I am across my first set of scales yet but I don't really figure out I don't see where I'd have any, any issues because I get a lot of questions people to ask me how all these is heavy with a three-quarter ton truck and I don't go over the 26,000 pounds. The three axles under the trailer support a good majority of the weight. And like I said, it's, they ride excellent. This one rides excellent. Um, not all of them. But if you're non-CDL, you have to go by the GVWR of the truck. You have to go by the what the gross vehicle weight. If you got a 10,000 pound GVWR and this one has a 24, a 20,000 pound GVWR, this trailer does. So uh, 10,000 and 20,000 is 30,000. That's over the 26,000. Therefore, a non-CDL can't pull it. But on CDL, you can go by the rolling weight. And um, I have not weighed, I weighed one of these things a long time ago and I was pushing my axle weight pretty good but like i said all the different times that i've pulled these out to california pulled them up to washington all over all over the country 
and I never had any issues except for that one where I went over 26,000 pounds going out to Santee, California. And on that one, even though it was heavy, I, they just told me all I needed to do was buy a temporary IFTA. I think, it, I don't remember, it was less than $100 for the trip. And uh, Indiana Transport reimbursed for that. And that's another, another thing. I, I've had a couple of different people ask me about the rates. The rates, I, I think rates all over the board suck. So, but, um, yeah, if y'all been with me for a long time, y'all know that I normally say I need $2 a mile, 2,000 miles on a trip. And that, that that's where I feel like I'm doing all right. And the rates haven't been $2 a mile in quite a while. This this trailer right here is paying a dollar sixty, going down to uh, Fort Myers, and is it worth it? It's worth it to me, but it barely, barely worth it to me. If it was, if it was any cheaper, I wouldn't have done it. Um, I am trying to stay close to the house. I've been running a lot of the Floridas, even though I know that. This trailer going out west would be would pay a pay a lot better. Uh, going north, east, northwest, any other direction than south, and the reason that I, from what I've been told, the reason that they do that is because um, everybody wants to go to Texas and everybody want to go to Texas and Florida so they can put a lower rate on, which is BS because they get the same rate no matter where they're going. They should give the same rate no matter where they're going that's too bright that sun is like coming right in the windows on me anyway um but yeah i i have, I have quite a few different people ask me why i stay with indiana transport or rates being like they are and honestly i just i don't like jumping from one job to another the the best part about indiana transport is once you get in the door once you get through you don't really have to talk to anybody. You don't deal with anybody. You just do your own thing, and I do like that. Um, but other companies are a lot more strict on a lot of different things. I know um, it just seems to be a whole lot more relaxed over here than it is at other companies, and I like that. You know, um, A lot of the guys that have came from different companies up over here they can't believe how relaxed it is. Once you get through, now talking to the people in the office may get kind of frustrating every now and again. It does for me. But um, once you get in, you're, you know, you start doing your own thing. It's usually you're good. And uh, most of the people that have, have came over here from the other companies recently, even though our rates seem to be a little lower, is they said the other companies didn't have work. They, just didn't have enough work to keep everybody busy. And I don't know about that, I'm just going off hearsay. And uh, I know they've got plenty of loads here right now going pretty much anywhere you want to go and have had for quite a while. It didn't even seem to slack up this year. But it's cheaper than what you want to haul it for. So, um, as far as the number one question I always get asked, is it a good time to get in RV transport? I don't think it's a good time to get into anything. If you got something good going on, you better stick with it. Um, like I say, it, it, for its size, it is riding really good. But I, I know it seemed like it's pretty rough right through here, but the road is really rough right through here. And if I had a 25 foot bumper pull on, it would be beating me just as bad, I guarantee it. So, um, like I say, if if somebody was thinking about going out and buying a truck and getting into this, I just don't know where the stability is at in this. I don't know if I'll be doing it in six, eight months. I don't know if I'll be doing it for 16 more years. I have no idea how things are going to go. And I just don't feel like there's a whole lot of stability in it. Uh, if you guys watched Mr. Tennessee's videos back earlier on, you know, that's why he's not doing it right now. He uh, is worried that he'll get a truck buy him another truck, come back out and do it, and the bottom will fall out of the right, freight will dry up, or fuel goes up, rates come down, something like that. And that's why he's not coming back out doing it. And 
the reason that I did come out and do it is I really enjoy it, and I, I, I can make the bills. Uh, I can make the bills and put a little money in the bank. I'll be happy, you know. And, I, and as long as I'm able to do that, I'll probably continue to do this. But unless something better falls in my lap. But uh, I really, really enjoy traveling, and this enables me to do that. I do not like pulling a trailer all the time, like uh, when I wound up getting an 18 with her not long ago, everybody asked me why I did not come do this with it. And if I'm gonna be stuck doing that, I wanted to be stuck doing something I was familiar, familiar with as far as hauling steel. And uh, I would rather be doing this mainly for, you know, I can, go to, I can go down here to Florida, kick this load off and I can go out to the beach, you know, just to pick up. If, This is cheap, but I don't think they could pay me enough money to do multi-haul or get back in another 18-wheeler or anything like that. I'm just, I'm past that point in my life and that's just not something that I'm interested in at all whatsoever. But if somebody had a truck sitting in a driveway and the, whatever they're doing right now is no good, it's not stable or not paying or whatever, um, I don't see any reason at all why not to give RV transport a shot. But I'm just saying don't go out and spend a ton of money. Don't go spend, buy everything brand new right off the bat and all that stuff. You use Facebook Marketplace. There's a ton of stuff. If you look up in Elkhart, Indiana, uh, on Facebook Marketplace, there's a ton of RV transport equipment for sale all the time coming and going. Um, especially right there around especially right there around uh, Elkhart, Goshen area. But um, that's what I see a lot of guys, I've seen a lot of guys go out and buy a brand new truck, spend a ton of money getting it outfitted and it just don't work out for them and that breaks my heart because you know that's a big investment. So definitely if you're thinking about this, dip your toes into it as easy as you can, as cheap as you can, run off a bat so you, if, if it doesn't work out for you, you're not stuck with it, but uh, that I don't. If if something happened and I decided to leave Indiana Transport, I'd probably leave RV Transport for good. Myself, I don't really have any interest in going with any of the other companies. I've heard not that they're I hear bad things constantly about them. I just barely have enough interest to stay on with Indiana Transport. So this here is my buddy Frank's. Hey, a few drivers over here staying around talking. So this is my buddy Frank's uh, 2020 High Country uh, Chevy 3500. And we just over here being nosy. He has put his bed and stuff, and I'll get back here to that in a minute. But he used to have his uh, bed and stuff in here like most of us do. Now he got a microwave, refrigerator, and a power inverter and a lithium ion battery under the bed to power everything back here and still got his auxiliary fuel tank got it where it opens up right here so he can get into his fuel tank and get some fresh air going through here when he's uh, out on the road and he just mainly does bumper pulls I get a lot of you guys ask me can you do bumper pulls only and make any money and that's what he's doing and loving the finish on this scamper top and it opens up, got his TV set up up here. If you see right there, he got a sink and got a generator. He said he'll uh, chain the generator to the back of the truck so nobody can run off with it if he's gonna be in here crashed out and needs it overnight. But most of the time that lithium ion handles everything a truck needs. Got him a little buddy heater. This is my first time seeing it. He's told me about it on the phone, but that is pretty cool. If things were different and I didn't need to stay versatile to take whatever whenever and then you got this set up a, a top, across the top where he can hang different accessories up there like his TV and stuff like that I'm loving the setup another thing he's got that I have not seen I have seen the Gen Y torsion hitch and everybody I know it's got them loves them but this is the first time I've seen it ramble weight distribution so that is pretty cool but uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys what Mr. Frank's got set up here. Well, something I missed. He was telling me just a second ago 
this here, this whole setup is out of a Toyota Tacoma, the, both boxes. He cut one of these down and put it up there so it'd have storage underneath. But if you see here, he still got the, uh, what do they call it? What'd you deck, call it? Deck, deck, oh. deck storage. Deck storage. Yeah, deck storage. Yep, so you got the deck on top and you got the, the pull out on the bottom. I've seen them, I've never actually seen one in person though. I've heard you can, you can like if you had the whole system going across, you can actually drop a full wheeler up on it. Yeah, yeah it's strong. heck yeah. And then with the Gen Y, that's one thing I love about my Gen Y, that's one reason I ain't got rid of it, you're taking it off yet, is makes it where your tailgate will clear your uh, jackhead there. Well, kind of checking out my old mobile wide, mobile single wide mansion here. And, uh, kind of look like a matchbox car up there pulling that big sun gun on it. Anyway, so I stopped and met up with some guys here at Glendale. Actually, I didn't. I stopped and took about a three hour nap because I just wasn't feeling worth a crap. So, went in and got something to eat with Mr. Frank and Semperfy, y'all know him. And, uh, now I'm gonna start my truck up, run and hit the restroom. I gotta get fuel and get my butt on the road. I probably won't make a whole lot of video tonight because it's dark, y'all can't see me. And uh, I will touch base with y'all in the morning and let you know where I'm where I'll end. At about five o'clock in the evening, I made it down to a rest area uh, just south of Unadalia, Georgia last night. Exit 121 right there at Unadalia, the next rest area past that. And uh, got me a good night, a well, good day's sleep. Got up about 10, 30, 11, and started riding on down to Florida. And I had two or three buddies that was delivering down here today. and. They said we ought to meet up and get us something to eat. So they are pulling in out front and I'm back here in the back. But it's my first time coming into this big T8 down here. It's exit 414 in Florida. I can't remember what the actual name of the town is, but um, I've never been in here before and they have a pretty good sized parking lot. Let me show you. Right over there is a deal where you, when you pull in, you get your parking ticket. And I was told it's $5 per night so I'll check on that but they got a pretty good sized parking lot and there have been plenty of times where I would gladly give five dollars to have a parking spot but I also heard they had good food in here so we're gonna walk in and check that out and then hell I'm not gonna deliver that one in the morning so Eden Garden Bar and Grill right here in the back of the TA I imagine this is the way you get in around here I was really impressed. I mean, if you're looking for a bologna sandwich or grape Kool-Aid, they're not gonna have it. But uh, they did have poker. They were starting a poker game when we walked out and uh, pool tables and a full bar and all that stuff. And uh, the food, I had the salad. My buddy had, Wayne had the, uh, the oh, he had a steak. I can't remember what he had, but picture of steak and um, yeah, the cheeseburger, double cheeseburger, massive. The food was very good. It was pricey, but it was good. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get a video for you guys to come out tonight. Tonight is Thursday. I don't remember the date. I wanted to say the 13th, Thursday 13th. So I'm going to try to get a video edited for you guys and catch a nap. Probably try to head on down kind of middle of the night tonight and give me a parking spot down that way. Good morning, guys. So, I say morning, it's about lunchtime. I have not been sleeping good lately for the past couple of weeks. I just didn't seem to sleep all night long, but I got my nap out last night. Man, I slept every bit of 10 hours and didn't ever move. So, I am just right here at delivery. And uh, that rest area, six miles away, I never noticed it before. That's gonna be my new try to get to spot except on the sign when I was getting ready to pull in it said there was uh forty parking spot forty one parking spots available. Now I didn't see forty one parking spots but I did see plenty of places to park, so that was that was a pretty good deal. There goes Blue Compass R V right there. But um right like I say getting a late start that's gonna put me getting home late, but it'll be alright. I actually gonna pull over somewhere tonight, edit another video, and then uh, Simplified Transports is gonna meet me in Reddick, Florida, and we're gonna 
stop somewhere and get something to eat and hang out for a little bit. Run back together, I guess. He goes up to Birmingham and then cuts off in Birmingham on uh, 22. If you're coming down here to General RV, it's right past the next red light past where all these boats sit. Exit 128, turn right, come down to I think it's 41, turn right, and then uh, turn right right here. And they're just opening this place up. So the last few times I've been here, all this was empty. Just full up today. Now this trailer, this has been a really, really, really good pulling trailer. Um, I forget how much I forget how much I did like pulling the uh, triaxles. It pulled, well, this, these. Now that one big one I pulled out Santee, I don't, I hope I'll never pull another one of those, but I don't remember what it was. But this one, it pulled really, really good. Rode good, the whole nine yards. But usually you park right here and they come out with a tow motor and get the trailer to take it, check it in. I'm gonna have to go hop off here and go check it again real quick, make sure that's correct. And um, yeah, I'll get back with you guys in a little bit. Well, there it is. We are unhooked. These guys down here are pretty doggone awesome. Easy to deal with, just all the way around, but they, they're doing a lot of changing. And with all that changing comes, uh, right. you, you know, that, there'll be just differences every time you turn around. You know, different place they want you to park, different place they want you to go, but sometimes you get out a place like that and they're aggravating, and, but this place is definitely not like that. Really good folks. Two more guys we can check in. I saw this guy last night at the rest area where I slept. Uh, pulled in part right next to him. He's Indiana Transport as well. And I like doing the truck setup videos for you guys. And I wished he would have been awake because that's a really cool looking setup. I also saw this setup when I walked out of the Petro truck stop and come out. Come to find out he is actually a friend of a friend. So I pulled over and spoke with him for a minute. That's a 2008 Chevrolet Silverado that's been stretched and added the sleeper, the on and generator and all that. Really cool setup. We were both kind of in a rush, but he did say if I caught him out another time, I was welcome to do a video on the setup. So I'm kind of looking forward to that if I do get to catch him out again. But I'm trying to keep my eyes open for you guys. I just literally didn't have time and the other guy was sleeping. Well, I'm completely checked in, delivered, everything was good. Uh, Scan my paperwork in, simplify, he had called earlier and said he was going to take a nap if I didn't mind waking him up when I got back up around Reddick, Florida. And uh, if he's still there when I get there, I'm going to wake him up. And we go home pretty pretty close to the same way, so we'll probably run back toward the house together. He'll split off, go to Mississippi, and I go on back up toward Tennessee. And, uh, anyway, that's about it, guys. Uh, I can't really think of anything else I need to add in here, so I'm going to cut this off. Hope everybody enjoyed the video. Like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.